excited to be here with you today. Um, I grew up in a small town, actually in Northern California, but it was the volunteer work and the volunteers who made everything happen there. So I'm just delighted to hear all the work that you are doing, and we're doing much of it in Medford, in uh, Ashland, in Talent, and Phoenix, in Southern Oregon. Um, I get to tell about the story of the peace tree. So this started in Japan, in Hiroshima, uh, by a man who was a survivor of the atomic bombing in 1945. He was an arborist, a tree surgeon, and he was taking care of some very special trees. Uh, if you've seen pictures of Hiroshima after the bombing, it was total devastation. All of the trees looked dead. But the next spring, shoots emerged from some of those trees and leaves started to unfurl. And it gave people such hope because they had been told nothing would grow for 75 years. So these trees are revered in Japan. Uh, they're called Green Legacy Hiroshima Peace Trees in, um, or Green Legacy Trees in um, Hiroshima. I, I can't say the Japanese word right now, name, uh, but they're very special. So this man, the survivor, started being concerned in the 80s and 90s about the survival of these trees long term and he started gathering seeds and growing seedlings and slowly spreading them around to other cities in Japan. Well in 2011 a group of volunteers gathered under the United Nations auspices and they named themselves Green Legacy Hiroshima and they started sending saplings or seeds to other countries around the world as a sign of friendship of desire for peace and also as a warning and a remembrance of what can happen with nuclear weapons. Uh, see. Uh, meanwhile, there was another survivor uh, who came who was a child in Hiroshima and uh, she came, she lost her mother, she lost her cousin who she was like a brother and many friends and family members. And for college, she came to the United States. She became a licensed clinical social worker and uh, therapist. And she uh, lived in the, uh, in the Chicago area. And when her children were older, she began speaking about the human consequences of nuclear weapons. She traveled sometimes with veteran, World War II veterans. She traveled to Britain, to Japan across the United States speaking, encouraging people to get involved to uh, get rid of the scourge of nuclear weapons. Well, she retired in Medford and joined our Secular Peace Choir. And one night she started crying after practice and said, all my friends in Japan can't understand why America has attacked uh, Iraq. And they, they want to meet these Americans um, who sing songs of peace and stewardship and friendship. And so Hideko had a vision, uh, Hideko Thomas Snyder, this, young, this woman who had been a child and experienced the bomb of Hiroshima, to take us, some American singers, over to Japan. So we spent a couple years fundraising and planning and organizing and we had a wonderful peace journey uh, to Japan. And there was such depth of feeling and sharing and connection that when she came back, she started the uh, One Sunny Day initiatives named after a book, her memoir, called One Sunny Day that was published in 1996. So since then, she has continued speaking out uh, classes, even during the pandemic, uh, on you know Zoom, <laughs> uh, visiting. Uh, she's now almost 90, and has more difficulty getting out. So I'm representing her. Um, we do a lot of local action. We uh, organize, participate in organizing the annual Hiroshima Nagasaki Vigil, which is has sometimes three or four days of activities, and. Um, try to, to commemorate those bombings, to remember the people affected, and also 
all of the people affected by the making of nuclear weapons, the, the indigenous peoples on whose land most of the mining has taken place, the uh, processing, the milling, the workers, employees, and uh, all those who've been harmed by radiation. Uh, so we, she founded One Sunny Day uh, initiatives. She started, she wrote a children's book in 2013 because she wanted to pass on the message of peace to the younger generation. Uh, and we have that book available. Uh, the artist, uh, an artist in Japan who was um, enamored by Beatrice Potter uh, did the illustrations. Um, we translated it, had it translated into Chinese and into, uh, we have a booklet on Japanese. We have a Russian translation that's almost ready, but we want to have a Ukrainian translation also. Because it's not, it's, a, it's, a, it's based on the history, uh, on historical fact, but it's really appropriate for any child who is experienced, or even adult who's experienced um, the trauma of relocation, of war, of devastation. Uh, so we've, we're trying to translate it in other languages and get it available. Her memoir, One Sunny Day Initiatives, uh, has now been revised. The original copy is out of print. So it will be, it's being published by Oregon State University. And it will come out in about three weeks on October 13th. So we have a little uh, note card over there if anyone's interested in picking up a little flyer, how to, how to order one from them. So, so she found out about the peace, tri peace trees, actually, at, when she was speaking at the International Rotary Conference in Southern California in 2016. So she worked and found someone who was a landscape supervisor at Southern Oregon University who had greenhouse facilities, and they ordered seeds from Hiroshima. Uh, they got a lot of seeds, and we ended up with 120 peace trees. Now, unfortunately, many of them were ones that can't grow in Oregon. They need a warmer climate. They're camphor trees. So those we had to find homes in California, in Georgia, in South Carolina, and other southern areas. Uh, we were able to partner with two organizations in Oregon who were excited about the project. The Oregon Community Trees is an advisory group to the Oregon Department of Forestry and they help promote uh, trees and, and urban forestry. So, and they're, they're located all over the state. And then the Oregon Department of Forestry has a urban and communi community and urban forestry division. They all got involved and partnered with us and they said, we want all the trees you have, the, all the ginkgos, all the persimmons that can survive in Oregon. And embarked on a process of um, advertising through the Tree City USA program so that we now have over 50 trees spread across Oregon in 37 different communities. Um, I have a map of, of where they are. They're over at the table. They're also on the Oregon Department of Forestry website and also on our One Sunny Day website. There's also a list of all the communities where they are. And on the Forestry Department website, uh, all the locations are, are there, so you can find them. Um, they've done a terrific job of spreading uh, the trees throughout Oregon, from the Columbia River over to the Idaho border, to, to the southern border, and over to the coast. They're all over. Um, we have a filmmaker in Portland who, is, who has been taking footage of many of the dedications of these peace trees across the state and that will be available next uh, winter or spring and he will be traveling around the state and then it will go on Oregon Public Broadcasting so you all can see it that way. There's also a few people going uh, to Hiroshima and Nagasaki in November from this group and they'll be doing footage over there uh, because people are wanting to meet the Green Legacy people in, in both in Hiroshima and also a group starting in Nagasaki. Um, there is an organization called Mayors for Peace, started by the mayors of Hiroshima and Nagasaki. It's an international uh, campaign 
to end nuclear weapons and to create peaceful and resilient cities. So we have a petition over there if you'd like to sign it saying you support the work. And if you would like Cottage Grove to become a mayor for Peace City, I've got information and can talk about that. We have eight mayors for Peace Cities in Oregon. So thank you so much for um, hosting one of the trees and being such a wonderful, delightful, involved community. Thank you.